Hi and welcome! <laughs> I know many AFGEEKs and private pilots out there have that thing, which I tend to call the if I win the lottery airplane, the kind of dream airplane that you'd instantly order if uh, you somehow had the money to afford it. For many years the choice would have been fairly easy. You'd uh, of course uh, buy a Cirrus SR22 or a 22 Turbo. Why? Because there's uh, never been an equivalent uh, competition to it, uh, which is why the Cirrus SR series for a number of years has been the best-selling uh, GA airplane out there. Now, I'm afraid finding an answer to this imaginary question has become a lot more difficult. Because of this, Diamond's DA50RG. It has been in development for quite some time and received uh, certification in late 2022 with deliveries uh, ramping up now. The reason I'm here today at the headquarters of Diamond Aircraft in Wiener Neustadt in Austria is because I've been annoying Diamond's marketing department for almost two years with a number of emails and phone calls and apparently they had enough and uh, finally invited me over for a test flight in this. So hopefully I'll be able to answer the big question. Is it better than the Cirrus SR22? Let's find out. Let me first give you an overview around the outside. The first time you see this aircraft on the ramp, you'll immediately notice that this is not a small airplane. It is in fact about 1.5 meter or 4 foot longer and its wingspan is almost 2 meters and, or about 6 feet wider than a Cirrus, which means uh, it will no longer fit in a standard 40 foot hangar, which I know can be kind of a bummer for potential US customers. The wing needs to be a bit uh, wider though, because uh, it needs to carry this large fuselage, uh, which the DA50 got from its uh, twin sister, the DA62. Let's stick to the wing though for a moment. While it also shares its uh, basic construction with uh, the DA62, um, the DA50's wings have uh, gotten its own airliner style double slotted flaps. And these flaps are so effective, uh, they managed to lower this uh, two-ton aircraft's stall speed to an impressive 59 knots. And yes, you're right, the DA50RG has a maximum takeoff weight of 1,999 kilograms or about 4,400 pounds, and is thus significantly heavier than the series and roughly the same useful load, depending a bit on the options. One of the reasons the DA50 is heavier is uh, because of its beating heart that uh, sits below this massive cowling there behind me. The DA50RG has a fatty controlled liquid-cooled twin-turbocharged V6 jet fuel burning engine called the Continental CD300 to be precise. It is the latest addition to Continental's jet fuel burning engines that uh, puts out 300 horsepower actually. Apart from uh, the retractable landing gear, the engine might be the thing that really sets it apart uh, from the competition from Duluth in uh, Minnesota. You might know Diamond is uh, famous for relying on jet fuel burning engines, even though their history with those has been a difficult path in the beginning. Some might have been following the whole diesel story from the beginning. Diamond was one of the first companies ever to put jet fuel burning engines with technology derived from the car industry into their planes. For this purpose, they partnered with a company called TLED in the beginning. For various reasons, TLED went bankrupt a few years uh, later, which turned out to become a huge problem uh, for Diamond, which is uh, why they took things into their own hands and started making their own Austro engines that now power the DA40NG, the DA42-6, uh, as well as the DA62. By the way, if you wanted to learn more about the diesel history in GA, make sure to check out Paul Bertorelli's masterpiece of aviation journalism and learn how Diamond managed to be successful with their Austro engines. So with uh, this plane, Diamond went back to trusting a partner for the engine of their DA50 here and uh, there is good reason to believe that the CD300 will be successful as well. Jet fuel engines have uh, definitely a better reputation these days. Reliability is no longer an issue. The CD300 itself has an increased TBR of 2000 hours and the gearbox has no fixed uh, replacement intervals at all anymore. We'll find out more about the advantages of the jet fuel engine later. First though, it's uh, time to finally take a look at the interior. The occupants of the back seats enter the DA50 through their own gullwing entry door, which is a thing you uh, won't find in the competition. You'll also notice the cabin is very spacious. Uh, it's actually 120 centimeters wide, wide both in the front and the back 
compared to the 124 centimeters in the Cirrus front seats and less than that in the back. This is why the DA50 can comfortably seat a 5, which can't really be said of the SR series. Not only the cabin is larger, but also the baggage compartment is massive. You get access to it by folding down the rear seats. It is divided into two areas. There also is a compartment below the um, floor there and uh, your total baggage you can take along is 90 kilograms and you have uh, plenty of uh, volume to uh, load all your stuff there. By the way, as I said, the DA50 has uh, the same cabin as the DA62. However, there is no option for a third, uh, for a third seating row uh, in here. But of course, uh, we're all more interested in uh, this seat there anyway. Oh, welcome to the cockpit of the DA50. Getting into this uh, seat was uh, very easy as you can fold uh, the leg rest up to easily place your feet here on the floor while uh, holding onto uh, these two handles here up front. There they are. Um, those who flew diamonds before will immediately feel at home in here. It's all pretty typical diamond issue. You have your big two screens of the uh, G1000 NXI there. Your lightning controls up here, all the engine controls down here with the electrical master and stuff. You get that big single power lever here in the middle and as well uh, your environmental controls which is uh, new to the DA50. You also have the option to add air conditioning for the aircraft. Here nicely on the right are, um, the circuit is the circuit breaker panel, nicely visible to the pilots and uh, your fuel controls down here. As an option in the DA50 as well in the DA62 you have uh, your keypad here which uh, makes controlling and entering stuff in the uh, G1000 NXI a lot easier. So to sum it up there are a lot of similarities in here with the DA40 and the DA42 and the cockpit is almost identical to the one of the DA62. While we are getting ready for the flight let me point out one thing that I find weird about diamonds which is that you can't adjust the seat in height in any of their planes. Diamond's reasoning behind these uh, fixed seats is that they will hold in place in the event of a crash as Diamond has identified seat rails as a weak area in crashes. They also put special crash elements underneath the seats to absorb the energy instead of passing it on to the occupants. Now I'm a little below the average size person at 1m73 or 5'8 which means the height is just about fine for me. However, if you were smaller than that, you will want to make sure to order a cushion that matches uh, this stunning interior when filling out the contract form for your plane. The pedals, on the other hand, can be moved back and forth electrically to adjust to different sizes. So the seat back can be reclined as well. Now I think time to start the engine. Doing so in the DA50 is almost as simple as starting the engine in a car. You flip up the engine master switch which will power the FADEC and turn on the glow plugs in the cylinders. You can see the annunciator there on the G1000. Once this goes off you just make sure the prop is clear and push the big silver start button down there. Unlike in most older aircraft engines make sure to actually hold the starter until the engine runs smoothly. Then immediately make sure the oil pressure is good. By the way, this starting procedure is mostly the same on all jet fuel aircraft engines on the market. So, wie der Marschall, Servus, das ist uh, Oscar Eco, Victor Tango, Whiskey, Pilot and Command, Papa Eco Delta, for one hour local flight. Now it's about time to introduce you to Sören. He's head of flight test at Diamond Aircraft and has been with Diamond for a long time. He has also done most of the certification flights in the DA50RG and will be introducing us to the aircraft today. It is actually free cast during the nose. Yes, that's what I wanted to mention. Yeah. You have to use the toe brakes to, to control yeah. the, the front gear on ground. It's easy, you get the hang of it really quickly. Now that's one feature I forgot to mention uh, when showing you the cockpit before. That's something that I really like. Diamond put the rudder trim actually on the back side of the 
of that uh, big glorious uh, power lever there. So uh, what you do is, as a pilot, if you might know, every change in power on the single uh, engine piston airplanes require a change of, uh, of the rudder input as well. So Diamond thought of that and put the rudder rudder trim button right there on the power lever so it it really kind of reduces uh, pilot workload I, I really like that kind of that kind of thing shall we go in the bay there yes for the, yeah. for the run up yes i would say so then the run up is kind of like on every diesel engine it's just basically pushing that button yes, there hold it and what you're going to be seeing i just explained it really quick is uh, you first have the um, ecu a and b indication there and then uh, the ECUs will go through their kind of routine. Now it's only a ECUB fail. You feel the RPMs rising there a bit and going back. Now the same thing should be happening on ECUA. Now you see ECUA fail here. Same thing there again. And just make sure that after the test there are no ECU warnings anymore and that's kind of your run up. Is there anything to add? Perfect. So that's how easy running up a diesel engine is. Like, oh, Jet fuel burning engine in here is just like with all the other um, Austro engines as well. So. The checklist also requires you to do an available power check where you run up the engine to the maximum and just make sure it delivers full power. Victor Tango, Whiskey, the wind 330 degrees, 8 knots, maximum 15, runway 27, backtrack and take off at your own discretion. Bravo, fan out the bump. Yep. Nice Approach is clear, 270. So just, uh, if we look sweaty, it's just because this demonstrator, it has the air conditioning panel, but as all the certification was made on this aircraft, it actually has no air conditioning installed, but of course if you where one of the lucky ones at being able to order one of these planes, you can uh, tick the air conditioning there as an option, it's part of the options list. So, but before we continue talking too much, let's make sure I'm lining up this aircraft properly here. I am ready for departure. Ready? Yeah, up to the Take off. Okay, so the power is power set. Set. You're braking a little bit. Yeah, I know. I just keep okay. yeah. a little bit right aileron input. Yeah. Airspeed is alive. Yes. So we, we are rotating. approaching rotating speed and rotate. All right. So a positive rate of climb. I hit the brakes and the yeah. out of usable runway. The gear is coming up. All right. Or climbing to, you said, uh, three and a half thousand feet there, right? Yeah, not above the thousand. We won't reach it. Okay. So, and then uh, make a Start left, the left turn, turn there, clear towards the, the south. That's the other Wiener Neustadt airfield on the other side. Actually, the biggest grass airfield in Europe. Oh, wow, is it? Yeah. Oh, very funny. Good. Okay, so we can bring it back to max continuous. Yes, first. So that's 90% the max continuous here, right? Yes. Yeah. And we clear off obstacles. Yes. The flaps are climbing up. Okay, so we can switch off the emergency fuel pump. Yeah. We usually keep the lights on here in that area yeah. because it's it's really really used for for training. Okay, so now turn to the south, please. The acceleration on takeoff was quite impressive. The DA50RG reached its uh, rotation speed of about 60 knots in no time and got us airborne quickly thanks to these effective flaps. I was expecting I would need to use a lot of right rudder, but as we had already set the rudder trim to accommodate the input needed, I kind of overcorrected and had the impression I might need some differential braking to the left in order not to leave the center line too far to the right. Something else I noticed is the relatively low noise level in the cabin, even with the engine working at full steam. The Cirrus is definitely considerably louder with its uh, TSI 0550. We left the area of Wiener Neustadt southbound towards the Alps to check the performance and flying characteristics of the DA50. 
Before that, time to uh, sum up some first impressions. One relates to the new environmental control system and the cabin temperature. So. Sorry to interrupt you. Can we increase the, the airflow a bit? Is that a fan like airspeed? Now, as you can see, mounting the iPad mini there with these uh, fixed aircraft attached RAM mount balls might not be too clever. Not only because it blocks the view onto the PFD here for you guys, but also because it blocks uh, the vent behind it. But even after I removed the iPad and the case a bit later, it was still very hot in the cabin. So as I said, this demonstrator has no air conditioning installed. I consider it a must have option after this flight though. So yes, what I can tell is that compared to the other DA the Diamond aircraft that I've flown before, which is DA20, DA40 and DA42, it kind of has a heavier feel to it at the, on the controls. Yeah. I still definitely prefer the central stick to, for example, the side stick you get in the Cirrus. To me, this is kind of the most intuitive way to, to fly an aircraft. Yeah. I know the Cirrus guys will be writing comments now saying <laughs> it's just because you're not uh, used to the Cirrus. Well, what I can tell is that I've been flying about two, 2,500 or even more hours on the Airbus A320 family, which has the side stick as well. Yeah. And I still prefer the, the yoke in the 777. Now, yes, it's, it will be in, uh, in your way for 99% of the flight, but for that 1% where you actually go get to hand fly the aircraft, it is, uh, it is better and I uh, even like this uh, better than the yoke, so uh, I, you know, it's, just, it's just fun and uh, intuitive to, to fly actually. I'll of course admit all of this mostly comes down to personal preference. And also one thing you, I mean we're sitting here like in a, in a car, like in an SUV, it's not if you've ever been sitting in a general aviation aircraft, most of them are either like sitting really close yeah, shoulder to shoulder. The cabin but route is, here it is uh, pretty comfortable. Awesome. Yes. It's comfortable. Yeah. It's, the view is great, actually, with the window. From the outside, you can't really tell that it's uh, it's going it's coming down so so low here on the side. Yeah. But the view is is really actually good. Yeah, you can look down vertically more or less. Good. Next up comes a high performance cruise check, so time to see how the DA50 performs if you put the hammer down and let it go at maximum continuous power, which uh, equals 90% or roughly uh, 270 horsepower here at 8000 feet. All right. So with the 90% load, the airspeed is actually now increasing. What do you expect to see with 90%? Uh, cruise at that kind of altitude. True airspeed, 175, something like that. Now, yes, this is a kind of a, a, a large aircraft, as I explained on the ground. It's you you will see faster cruise numbers on on other planes, but still, I mean, you you'll be more efficient than definitely than with any of the uh, IO 550s there. And uh, I mean, we're all pilots. We we'd like to fly. Is it really worth? Uh, investing like uh, four or five gallons more just for these yeah. uh, extra 10 knots of airspeed. I, I mean, guess it was not too bad, 175. That's, that's an awesome, awesome. I think if, if, I actually, oh, if I actually flew that plane myself, it's uh, definitely more economic to go like 70% or so. And you'll yeah. be in a, in a range uh, like 12, 11, 12 yes. gallons. And that's something you, for, for an aircraft this big, that's uh, that's just outstanding. That's really impressive. So uh, for the time being, at 90% uh, load, you have uh, about 15 gallons, which is still not bad. Still a lot less than than on the competition. Now it's time to back all of this up by some uh, facts. Let's look at the relevant pages of the AFMs of both aircraft: the DA50RG on the left and the Cirrus SR22 Turbo on the right. The latter will only go up to 85% power and cruise, so uh, let's compare the numbers at 75% uh, power at 8000 feet in ISA conditions for both of these planes. You can see for yourself the Cirrus will be 40 knots faster in this example while burning 4 US gallons or about 15 liters per hour more. In other words, the Diamond will be about 8% slower but uh, about 24% more fuel efficient at the same time. And let's not forget you have a bigger plane in a more spacious and comfortable cabin to spend the time in. 
Yeah, with that with that uh, jet fuel burning engine, you really see see figures you you won't be buying with any of won't be yeah, finding with any of the gas burning. And engine. you don't have to lean and, and watch out for the temperatures all the time. Yeah, control you can, just really quick, sorry. Yeah, right. you can easy you can actually easily change your power settings whenever you like. Yeah without taking care about the engine. Now with the one yeah. question regarding the cow flaps, you really have, I have control again, thanks so much. We have, have kind of already big air inlets, you still need those for additional Just for the load. climb. Just for the in climb. hot weather conditions for the climb. And otherwise, so if you depart it in winter, you can leave those closed for takeoff yes. as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just you have to monitor the temperatures. But it's, it's, uh, it's part of the standard procedure, Yeah. just, just to make it easy. So before takeoff, you're so you're just opening the the cowls. Yeah. It's not making a big difference actually in, in, in climb speed because you're not too fast. Yeah. I think the ESP could be mentioned here. So when you're banking now more than 45 degrees, the, the uh, aileron force would be would increase. Actually, yeah. you can. Do that if you like. Now to make sure this video doesn't get too long after all, we'll skip this part and fast forward to the clean stall. If you were interested in more details like the protection the autopilot provides, some more technical stuff regarding the G1000 NXI, the autopilot, the fuel system and so on, make sure to visit my site on Patreon where you can support this channel and access the, this video with an additional 15 minutes of uh, Patreon exclusive content for those who want to dive deeper and learn more about the DA50. Find the link in the video description. So I would say we are starting with a clean stall okay. in this direction on that heading. I will set the heading, okay, and uh, reduce the idle. So that's the gear warning again, telling me hey, the gear, your gear is not down. I can't switch it off, but usually we're not doing that. Okay, now we're bleeding away the speed. I'm trying to maintain those, uh, those 8,000 feet there for a while. Lima Zulu Delta Victor and uh, exit point Devin. Check gear. Oscar Victor Foxwood, what do I report actual time of departure? You want me to uh, recover gear. once we got uh, the stall warning or just uh, continue to the buffet? Whatever you prefer, you can bring it back to the to the stop. UNH 1010, altitude 1900. Again, the stick force is com coming more and more, so you normally you would want to trim at this point, but actually, I'm just going to hold it for now. So that's, that's the stall the warning one. now. We continue all the way to the buffet. Clean stall at about 75, 75 knots there. All right, there's some buffeting now. I try, still try to hold it. And all that's going to happen is uh, you get about a thousand feet there, recovering, adding some power, making sure to give it some right rudder, and bring the nose back up again. Uh, it's really, it has no tendency to go to any of the, to, to actually tip over on any of the wings. We lost now about six, seven hundred feet, but that's because I actually held it in the stall for a while. Yes. Yeah. That's really, that's really, uh, okay, I that's think, uh, Let's go to textbook, the textbook uh, uh, stall characteristics. Yeah, let's there, go right? to the, the stalls in takeoff and landing configuration were equally uneventful. I've flown a few different GA airplanes by now and can confirm the DA50 really has textbook stall characteristics. Yes. Awesome. Okay, we can now simulate um, an approach, a fast approach. Yes, let's do that. So, uh, you're Coming to a bigger airport, and, and you don't want to disturb the the fast-moving jets, so you can keep the can keep the speed up to 170 on the glide. Just add power, going down, three percent glide. That's kind of a scenario where you go in a bigger air airport on the ILS, and you want to don't want to hold up the traffic behind exactly. the airliners too much so it's uh, that's the flight path vector there on the g1000 NX, nxi which is nice to have that should be about three degree now a bit less than that maybe actually yeah 
We have a 90% load, that might be a bit too much. Let's uh, keep it at 80 there. And no, you'll, be, you'll actually be flying, that's kind of a 777 uh, approach speed now, so you you really won't be holding up holding up anyone there. Yeah. And when you're uh, pulling back to idle now, so you would go below 161, then you can drop the gear pretty quickly, so you see you're keeping the three degrees, the speed is bleeding well, down, you can drop the gear now, so okay. keep the three degrees, yeah. and still the the speed leads below the the, the takeoff uh, speed, which we are reaching with 131. 131. Yes. So now you can bring it take to take left takeoff. Uh, and we could now select landing flaps already. So exactly. Check flaps for the landing. So I'd really be. Yeah, you see, you could comfortably uh, keep the speed up to at least, let's say, maybe three miles on final. Or yeah. even less, maybe. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's a cool, that's a cool thing. Especially the landing gear operation speed 161 knots. So that's going to be approach speed there about 75, right? Uh, it's actually it's actually a cool cool tool there, I guess. 80, 75. Yeah, that's good. All right. So yeah, gear up, flaps take off. Check gear. Back to those 75%. Before we start the approach, let's look at some numbers there. We did already look at the performance figures in cruise. Let's uh, compare the takeoff distance the DA50RG will achieve compared to the competition from overseas. Despite the heavier weight of the diamond, it still offers a lower rotation speed and requires roughly 12% less runway to get airborne compared to the Cirrus. As both have the turbo, this uh, ratio remains mostly unchanged at high altitudes. Regarding useful load, both planes really play in the same league. The Cirrus will uh, use more fuel in cruise, but Afgas is uh, a little less dense compared to jet fuel, plus the useful load is a little higher in the Cirrus to start with, so uh, really not a big difference there. It's important to remember though that if you uh, were to opt for air conditioning and the TKS de-icing, both aircraft's empty weight will uh, be at least 50 kilograms or 110 pounds heavier. And finally, the kind of most important figure of them all, the price. I have to disappoint you because I can't really give a fair comparison there. Partly because unlike Cirrus, Diamond won't publish their price lists. Partly because there are too many variables that uh, have an influence on the math. The biggest might be the Euro US dollar exchange rate. Then there's the import tax, cost of the ferry flight, possible discounts, selected options, etc. What I can tell you though, that according to Diamond's marketing team, a nicely equipped DA50RG will cost about a million euros. So with the exchange rate at the time I'm editing this video, this would mean that both planes cost roughly the same. Now you know why this dream airplane will stay a dream airplane for the vast majority of uh, private pilots, including myself. Sad but true. Now sit back and enjoy the approach back into Wiener Neustadt. So, the um, approach is a little bit weird here. So the next point is that um, reporting point Mike there. Yeah. This is actually an industrial bakery over there. Oh wow, well, yeah. So you're gonna steer for that point Perfect. next. So we just quickly disengage the old part. That's actually this one here. Yep. Now for those uh, watching in the United States, in many European countries we have like uh, kind of prescribed tracks we need to follow when flying into smaller airfields that's uh, mostly, no mostly for uh, noise abatement uh, purposes there. And it is uh, the same kind of story here in Wiener Neustadt as well. That's uh, why you're saying the approach is kind of weird. Yeah. Good, so landing lights on, then yes, uh, fuel on. pump the on. Emergency fuel pump on there. And uh, Lima is, is just straight ahead there. Straight ahead. All right. And then we're doing a turn onto the right yeah. base leg. All right, directly. That's a little bit weird. Yeah. You can go down to 1500 now. Okay. Yep. 
That would be circuit altitude. Yeah. All right. Uh, we avoid that village and then turn yes. left in for a right uh, right face. Exactly. Perfect. Let's so we can open the cowl flaps for the uh, for the touch and go. Yep. So we just have to configure. Yes. Now you're reducing the speed. And you uh, do the right base kind of like in an angle. That's a very sh short final okay. actually. We're usually following the railway line here. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so you can as well. keep on turning. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. Oscar Tango with his approaching hotel. So you usually go for the gear, gear first. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just to get rid of the warning. Oscar Tango with his 320 degrees. He's not so long with the 7 at your discretion. And afterwards okay. it's going to be a right circuit as well? Yes. I'll make sure we That's a very too short one. And we would uh, request that on Bravo afterwards. Copy. Good. So we can take the short one in the north. Yeah. Okay. Now usually the approach speed is, you said, 75 to 80 knots somewhere in the... 80, yeah. 85, yeah. yeah. Alright. Okay. So target speed would be 75. Oh, just before touchdown. Then. Yeah. Okay. And you cross the railway, or should, should I just follow it for the? I'm usually following it. You, oh can, right. you can cross it. I know. Just, okay. just, uh, so we've got the gear down. The flaps are I would go. just uh, make the gear test once yeah. to make sure that the red is also working. All right. And Pulling the, back the tower. Yeah. Power yeah. and we go flaps landing. Sure. Speed was below 190 knots there. Yep. And now we are about 80, 85, that's what you said. Yes. Oh, yeah. As always in life, it was in this very moment that my main GoPro Hero 10 decided it had no more battery after just a little more than an hour of recording time. So no more intercom audio for the rest of the flight. With its final speed of roughly 75 knots, the DA50's approach speed is roughly 5, maybe 10 knots lower than in the Cirrus which is uh, nice on shorter runways here in Europe. Let's uh, see how my first landing works out. I was actually pretty happy with that first landing for a retractable landing gear, the inner carriage soaks up the energy nicely which of course helps in making a good impression with your passengers. The attitude shortly before touchdown there was about 2-3 to three degrees and I still had quite some excess energy there. So I'd say the DA50 has no tendency whatsoever to land flat or on its nose wheel if you're not bleeding away all the energy. Some say this issue requires more attention in the series. Spoiler alert, I'm proud to report the second landing went even better. Make sure to watch the pitch during touchdown, this should uh, confirm what we saw before. With uh, these two landings my DA50 demo experience ended. It was an awesome experience. Thanks again to Sören for showing me this uh, beautiful plane. I'm sorry I can't uh, show him again here because yet another GoPro camera quit its service in that moment. So what are the takeaways from this flight? So the airplane is uh, back uh, safely in the hangar, we didn't actually destroy it, which is good and it's time for a conclusion and to answer the big question for myself. Would I buy this if I had the money to afford this? Is uh, can this kind of my new dream airplane? I can tell you for sure, for me it is. I like uh, this better than Cirrus, I'd rather have this than an SR22T. Why? Partly because um, of the posit positive impressions uh, from this awesome demo flight. 
Um, and all the positives that we learned about before, partly because it kind of fits better into the European GA infrastructure. It can be operated out of uh, shorter, shorter runways. It uh, can take uh, jet fuel, which you'll get almost everywhere, um, which is not true for Afghas here in Europe. For customers in North America, the decision might be a bit more difficult because um, of the um, well, the market leader has its uh, selling points as well, of course. Um, cabs, for example, to name uh, just one. But even then, I think, uh, thanks to the engine, the DA50 seems to be the more, more future-proof airplane, I'd say. It is uh, more efficient, it runs not only on uh, jet fuel, but can also be operated on synthetic uh, jet fuel substitutes, which at least uh, midterm appear to be um, the only realistic way to uh, run a plane of this size Rely, without relying on fossil fuels. I don't expect to see any synthetic Afghas alternative, uh, at, at least for now. I honestly am very curious to read uh, your opinion, guys, down in the video and uh, down in the comment uh, section. Uh, let me know if you, uh, if you like the diamonds, if you um, like it, this masterpiece here, especially the F-50, and uh, let me know about your air, uh, dream airplane. Uh, big thanks to Diamond uh, as well for allowing me uh, to fly their demonstrator here in uh, beautiful Austria. If you enjoyed watching this film, make sure to hit the like button and uh, subscribe to this uh, channel. I'd love to see this uh, small channel grow a bit. It is a ton of work uh, that goes into uh, um, creating and making a video like this. Thanks for watching all the way to the end and as always, um, many happy landings out there.